Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you all about drop down lists and how to deal with them in dockable and floating UI panels. Today we're going to be making basically two scripts that are really simple that do the same thing. They have a drop down in the middle of it that starts out empty and then we have a refresh button inside of it which will then basically load any of the file names that we want. In my case, I'm loading all of the files from my videos folder and now I can have access to those. And of course, we're going to be making a dockable and a floating version because there are differences. Um, each one of them will work the same way where you just click refresh and load up any files or an array. So we're going to be taking a look at how to create a drop down list, how to modify its items and a few other useful things today. So let's go ahead and start off with the dockable script since I get a lot of questions asking how to do a drop down list in a dockable script and then make it smart and load up items in a certain way. So I have a preset dockable script here and we're going to basically add a drop down list inside of here and then adjust the values with the function. So I'm going to add my drop down in my first group here. The first thing we need in a dockable script is to add the name inside of our res variable. So I'm just going to call it a drop down list. I can just say drop down. And then we're going to go ahead and call it a drop down list. This is the item type it's going to be. And we're not going to put anything inside of uh, these brackets here where normally you would put in like your items and then you could put in a list of all the items for your drop down list. In our case, we want it to be empty. So since we're done, we'll just uh, close out this line with a comma slash. And now we have a variable called drop down that is a drop down list and it should be empty. So now if we run our script, you can see we have an empty drop down list. It's a very small size. We need to adjust that as well, as well as our refresh button and our close button, which our close button will just close the script. So now in order to populate this drop down list and get things going, we're going to make all of our adjustments down below in the default section where any of our button on clicks or other functions are located. So now in order to reference our actual drop down in a, a dockable script, we need to refer to mypanel.grp and then our drop down is in group one so dot group one and then it's called drop down so inside of the group group one drop down is our drop down list what we can do right here is go ahead and set the size so that it's not so small i'm going to go ahead and say like 200 by 25 and now you can see our uh, drop down is nice and wide so it can fit any file names or whatever we decide to put in and now we need to actually go ahead and write the function to put stuff inside of here when we click on the refresh button. So what I need to do is create an on click function for this refresh button here. And in order to do that, I'll say my panel.grp and it's inside of group three here. And we're going to refer to our refresh button and on click, we need to do a function. And just to make sure it's working, we can say alert refresh button. And now when we run it, if we hit the refresh button, it's going to say uh, refresh button. I also need to update my code here to be our close button and not our drop down and update the group as well. So now when I run the script, I can close it easily. So now our script is looking good. We just need to basically add the function when they hit the refresh button to not only tell us that we've hit the refresh button, but to also load in whatever elements we decide. Now this can be an array full of elements or it can just be file names. We can basically make it whatever we want. So what I'm going to do is instead of saying alert refresh button, we're going to basically populate our drop down. You can call it whatever you want. And we're going to take in two arguments. The first argument is going to be the drop down element itself. And the second needs to be an array full of uh, whatever we're going to fill it with or files. In our case, we can just go ahead and give it a random array here. Just say apples bananas and oranges and this should fill it up uh, with these three and now we need to go ahead and define this function and write it really quick so we'll say function populate drop down the first element it's going to take is again our drop down list so I'll just call it DD and then the second is going to be the array of elements to fill it with now the first thing we need to do is go ahead and reference our object model viewer if you have it if you go to the script UI classes and drop down list, you can see all of the properties and methods we can use to basically affect any drop down list. Um, what we're going to be doing is using the add, and then we need to give it a type and a text in order to add elements using a loop and our array. And then we're also going to use the remove all method to first remove all of the elements within our list. 
And you can run through all of the instances here of a drop-down list and check out the methods and properties you can access, everything from uh, adding elements to removing everything to what you have selected, etc. But we're just going to be first starting off by removing everything that's in our drop-down list. So we're going to say all. I believe that's how you refer to it. And then we need to loop through this array that we're bringing in. And then each time we have a new array element, we're going to add it to our drop down list. So I'm going to create a for loop. And we're going to loop through our array. And then each time through our array, we're going to grab our drop down. And we're going to grab the method called add, I believe dot add and we're going to have two arguments the first one is the type of element we're going to add and the type of element we're going to add needs to be in a string format in our case we're going to add an item because uh, each thing contained within a drop down list is referred to as an item and then the second is the text for this item and the text for this item is going to be the current index of the array we're looping through and this should basically run through any array we give it and fill it up with that item so if we go ahead and run this, you can see we start off with nothing. If we hit refresh, still nothing. But if we drop it down, you can see we get apples, bananas, and oranges. What we need to actually do, lastly, is grab our drop down and set the selection to be the first element by saying selection equals zero. What this will do is basically we have all these elements. It will say the first element needs to be selected. So now when we run it and refresh it, and it should go ahead and load up the elements and then select the very first one so we know that it's been updated. And one quick note with regards to uh, dot selection and dot selection index, um, one thing that is tricky sometimes with uh, After Effects scripting is that when you use a dropdown and you set something by the selection, this will set which one of these elements is selected. So if I selected one here for the selection, it should give me bananas rather than apples because it's the second element. However, um, what this is actually referring to is the selection.index. That is what we're setting when we say dot selection equals. We're actually setting the uh, sort of index that is selected. But if we were to alert uh, our dd.selection after we set the uh, dd.selection to be one or to zero, we're not gonna get zero when we alert this. We should get the actual element name. So if I refresh this, you can see Instead of alerting zero, which we just set the selection to, it's gonna set it to apples. So one tricky thing is when you're setting the selection, um, it's going to change which element is selected, but when you actually try and get the selection, you need to refer to the selection.index uh, in order to get the sort of number instead. So we get zero here, just like our selection is, by referring to the index. So basically, whenever you set a drop down selection, it needs to be an integer, but when you read it, it's gonna give you back a string, or in this case, whatever was inputted here. Uh, and if you need the integer of what the selection number is, like right here, you need to refer to the index. All right, so now we have it refreshing and loading this up. Let's go ahead and do one more thing to make it more useful and not use fruits um, as our populace. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just give it a whole bunch of files. And I'm gonna say, uh, grab the folder called uh, my videos folder, and we're going to get files. And now this is going to give it a whole list of files rather than just an array of names. Um, so what I'm going to do, if I, if I go ahead and run this, and refresh it, you can see it's gonna give me all of the full lengths to these paths, which could be what you want. But what I actually want to do is just get the names. So each time through, instead of giving it the whole file name, I'm going to say array.name. And then just to make sure we don't have any weird characters, I'm going to replace uh, this globally with a space. So now if we go ahead and run it, refresh, we're just gonna get a full list of all of our file names. If I remove this replace function, you'll see that uh, where there's normally spaces, it adds this percentage to zero symbol. So what I'm basically doing is replacing that with normal spaces uh, globally. So awesome, now we have this dockable script working with our dropdown list, and it's going to load up any uh, basically array we give it. If you have files coming in, you may want to specify uh, to grab the name instead, otherwise you'll get the whole length of the file name. But now let's go ahead and apply this same concept to our floating script. I'm gonna go ahead and copy uh, our populate dropdown function because it's very useful. 
and I'm going to open a new JavaScript file. Now we're going to quickly whip up pretty much the same exact UI as this. And in order to do that, we're just going to start with a main window. It's equal to a new window. It's going to be a palette type window. We're not going to call it anything, and it's going to have undefined size. Then we'll set the orientation of the window so all the elements go in it from top to bottom. So in order to do that, we'll say column. And then we'll create two groups, one for this drop down and one for the button. And since this is a floating script, we don't need a close button. We'll just need to uh, press the X that comes with it. So we'll create a variable called group one and set this equal to our main window. We're gonna add a group, undefined size, call it group one. And then I'll go ahead and copy and paste this and create a group two as well. In group one, we need to add our drop down list. So I'll say var drop down is equal to group one dot add and we're going to add a drop down list undefined size and the elements inside of it again we can start off with some elements if we want so like in this case I can fill it up with these fruits and it should already have them when we load it up so now in our group two we just need the refresh button so I'll say var refresh button is equal to group two we're going to add a button undefined size and call it refresh. And then lastly, to show this UI, we need to grab our main window and center it, and also our main window and show it. So now if we go ahead and run this script, you can see we have a nice drop down. It's not selecting our first element, uh, which is fine for now, but we have all of our array of fruits here and our refresh button and our close button. Let's go ahead and increase the size of our drop down and uh, link it to this populate drop down function. So I'll say dropdown dot selection is equal to zero. Remember, we set the selection uh, with an integer, but we read the selection. It will give us a string of whatever that is. So I'll go ahead and make this uh, empty here by just uh, having empty brackets, and that should work. And I forgot to change the size. And we'll just make it the same as last time, 200 by 25. And then lastly, we need to take our refresh button and say dot on click is equal to an anonymous function. And the function we're gonna run is populate dropdown. And instead of a, we need to give it our DD element, so dropdown, and then the array of what we're gonna fill it with. In our case, again, we can just say folder videos dot get files to get all the files in my videos folder. Or if we could uh, maybe do the documents and now if we run it, I think it should work. Go ahead and hit refresh. You can see we're gonna get a list of all of the files within whatever we give it, in my case, the documents. So I have all of my folders here and then a bunch of files. And the nice thing is you'll be able to see if they have a file extension, but if they don't, uh, it, that indicates that it's a folder. So yeah, that's gonna do it for this week's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's all about drop-down lists and how to manipulate them and use them in floating and dockable scripts. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button down below, as well as hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And below, you can check out a link to GitHub where you can follow us for updated code and future projects, as well as follow us on Instagram. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.